everything else versus Bitcoin essentially gets spent and dies. I want to be able to have reactive security. And I think OpVault is to date the most straightforward, easiest to use way to do that. I will not be insulted by a clockmaker. <laughs> Overall, these kind of ways to make the network easier to both build on and interact with, I think is a really big deal. If Bitcoin existed when we started Twitter, we would not have to go down the ad model path. I mean, as simple as that. Integrating Lightning into a social network is the killer app. Hello, and welcome to the Bitcoin.Review podcast, where we explore developments and projects with the people who actually make them happen. The show is supported by Pod 2.0, Sat Streaming, and CoinKite. If you're a new listener, I'm NVK. I run CoinKite, where we've been helping people secure their Bitcoins for over a decade. We make the cold card and fun products like the block clock. You can find more information about it on CoinKite.com. Hello, and welcome back to the Bitcoin.Review, really is Noster.Review version. Don't explain computers to laymen. Simpler to explain sex to a virgin. That applies to Noster. So, guys, uh, we have we have a fun full show tonight, today, this morning, and uh, I have with me here a, a group of repeaters and uh, and uh, a new face. Uh, hello, Kiran. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming. <laughs> Uh, I hope, uh, did you pee? Because uh, this is going to take over two hours. So uh, I did. I hope you're pee, ready. Right. I did. I'm prepared. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Milian. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Yeah. Hey, Tony. Good to be here, guys. I did the lightning one and now now I'm doing some Nostra ones. So that'll be fun. Okay. Well, Nostra is definitely more fun and, less, and more simple. So uh, this should be quick. <laughs> And uh, Pablo dot review. Uh, we're ready for your show. <laughs> Glad to be here. Welcome to my show. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so with that, I have very important news. This broke a few days ago, and uh, BRB dot IO is now five hundred. <laughs> it's finally down. Uh, yeah, I, I have no idea. I have not logged in. I have not checked the logs. It's just wonderful 500, and, and, and it will be right back. Did you guys <laughs> do something to make it a 500, or did you just let nature take its course? Nature took its course. <laughs> the way it should be, we don't babysit our servers. You know, We run FreeBSD, so they either, they either run forever. Well, the server is still running. <laughs> <laughs> the application is not. <laughs> it's still serving 500 with our brand on it. See? That's not possible on Linux. Will it be right back, or are you just going to leave it like that? Be right back. Okay. Because it's on our list of recommended relays. On, on, like when <laughs> That's right. New users <laughs> sign up for Prime I mean, it's right know, there. Some people would enjoy uh, receiving 500 messages. They need to experience what Noster is like, right? So it's got to right? like build that into the experience. No guarantees. Exactly. I can say for certain that the, the Snort users are definitely enjoying the 500s because... They're just constantly in the, the logs because of this gossip model. People still have BRB in their in their relay lists, and it's just always connecting to B, BRB. You know, uh, you you guys could leave it there as a means of having a, a test case for 500. <laughs> it would be very consistent. Yeah, the always down relay. It is proving a point in comparison with BitcoinHackers.org, right? Where people are not able to use the service anymore, whereas Nostra, they can still use it. No, and here's another advantage of it. I think we should actually start charging for that 500 message. We'll put like a, make it into a vending machine. There you go. So you have to pay to get your 500. That's the use case I had in mind. Man, we really uh, onto something here. Uh, do you guys think I can get some funding for it? <laughs> it's already monetized. Find a right. way to monetize Noster. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Moving on to the next item on the housekeeping. Uh, open sets, first wave of Noster grants. Uh, this was very cool. Uh, it was a bit of work, and uh, Mr. Gigi uh, uh, really uh, uh, saved the day and like got things moving faster. So here is the big list of people who got some jackbucks. NDK by Pablo. Abla by Verbicha. Coracle 
by Horobod, Iris by Martini, Demos by Will, Rust Noster and Rust SDK by Yuki BTC, Noster Relay, NASJS by Cody Tseng, Soapbox by Alex Gleason, Code Collaboration Over by Noster by Dan Conway, Satellite by Love V Tide, Amethyst by Victor, Pinster by <laughs> Sepper Sepper HR Safari, uh, <laughs> Noster <laughs> Build by Noster Build, Gossip by uh, Mike Dilger, and uh, Noster SDK iOS by Brian Montz. Noster Design by Carnage. So, so it's a long list. And uh, if folks uh, need the bucks, uh, please apply. We're getting them out. And we're now working on figuring out how to do some bounties as well. So uh, let's keep the momentum going as the users get preoccupied with X.com. So are all of Jack's bucks gone, or is there a lot left still for other grantees? Oh, Jesus Christ. There, there's quite a bit. And uh, uh, not my words, his. I mean, it should be recurrent. So, uh, and then we are working on getting others to also donate, because if you're American, uh, it's better to donate to open sats than to pay taxes. Same thing. <laughs> really. Yeah, we... Uh... I'm not sure if it's in this one or not, but we Mutiny got a grant as well for incorporating a lot of Nostra things inside of Bitcoin. So is it already um, public? I can't remember. Yeah, it's public. It, it went out in like the Bitcoin grants one. Um, I guess because it made sense because Mutiny is yes. mostly a Bitcoin wallet, but it's going to have a lot of Nostra things and all the all the features we wanted to add with the grant are pretty much all Nostra related, like Nostra based DLCs, a Nostra like. Venmo style list inside the wallet, um, a lot of things like that. So we're excited about that. You know, like whatever keeps the momentum going, right? Like, and if it's good software that's open source, I mean, it's kind of a no brainer, right? All right. Some stats run down from Primo. Wait, Primo. <laughs> Users, 539,000, well, almost 40, 540,000. Public keys, 32 million. That's a lot of bots versus users. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's a ratio of 100,000, uh, like more than 100,000. Okay, uh, zaps, 1.3 million. Yay. BTC zapped, 12.3 BTC. Public notes, 63,000. Repost, 12,000. Reactions, 21,000. You're off by... Sorry, 21 million. Repost. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. (laughs) Hey, guys, I'm trying to stand in desk to make my back better. Okay? (laughs) It's confusing me. (laughs) All events. Oh, this might be a short rip then. That's right. Listen, if people want accurate numbers, they should check the show notes. (laughs) All right. So let's start. Before we move on, uh, first. Million, what do you do? You know the uh, the saps, uh, if those are like validated that the sap are like it's all legit or does it include bullshit? Subs? They're not validated, so we're just uh, okay. like telling up, we're telling up all of the um notes that you know all of the zap events and removing the obvious nonsense. There are some you okay. know, obviously yeah. wrong stuff, every anything that uh, semi salt touches basically. <laughs> 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 But, uh, like, how would you even validate it fully? You can't ever know for sure that the zap took place. You only know that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you only know if you're the recipient or the sender. Other than that, you have to trust, uh, you know, you have to go by what's in the events. Yeah, so there's one of the things is that the supper is now in the kind zero uh, for many, uh, many, um, many pubkeys. Uh, and you can check that the supper pub key matches the the publisher of the of the sub uh, event. That's one way, but yeah, you still can't know if it's if it's real. But you're going to get rid of a lot of of BS if if you do that one validation. There was a bug a few weeks back where um, Ben Carmen was able to zap me before I turned on any zaps at all, and there was a bug <laughs> in his implementation of uh, Zapple Pay. 
and he he replaced the wrong zapper and then but Domus and Amethyst and a lot of other clients weren't weren't checking the zapper I think um, so they showed that you know people were zapping uh, it used to be you had to be the recipient and the sender in order to to fake the numbers but you know Ben found this bug where he could basically you know zap people that weren't even accepting zaps in the first place and would show up couldn't we like have some lightning receipt that if the client wants to get a proof you would there's receipts but like the invoice isn't really broadcasted as well i mean you could do something like that but it's still if you're both the sender and the recipient like no one in the world can validate that you aren't yes. it's just a pre-image and a pre-image hash and you can just keep on sending it back to your yeah that's yeah yeah. yeah i guess how about uh does boat 12 fixes this when it ships <laughs> in 10 years from now. I, I've TM, forgotten TM. what Ball 12 fixes. It's, 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 it's been too long. It <laughs> fixes everything. It's CTV too. It Does it make the Bitcoin fixes. price go up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess, uh, I guess we're moving on from this one. Okay, guys. So uh, NIP90, data vending machine. I uh, wish we had the person who wrote it uh, around yeah. here to, to go over it. Would be nice. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the TLDR of the data vending machine. There is no TLDR because it's very long. <laughs> but the really long TLDR is it's it's basically like a marketplace for it's sort of like designed for AIs, but it doesn't need to be AIs. But basically, it's a broadcast system where you can you say that you are interested in some type of compute, and data vending machines uh, offer you that that compute in any way they choose. So f the reason I, I wrote it is because I wanted to do transcriptions on highlighter.com so I can transcribe a podcast in a very easy way. I don't want to run like all these AI whisper models on the back end because I'm too lazy for that. It's not my core expertise and I don't want to be, I don't want it to be my core expertise. Uh, so I said, ah, fuck it, let's, let's build a, a marketplace for that and have data vending machines competing. And then as I started exploring it, I realized that it was deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, but yeah, you can create custom feeds, you can create all kinds of really weird long tail algorithms for, uh, like your top trending topics or puff keys or whatever it might be. And you could have uh, someone might choose to pay to create a bot and someone else might choose to pay for only trending topics that are not safe for work stuff or only trending topics that have typos or whatever. Like it can be just any, any, any kind of... Um, any kind of really weird uh, niche use case. Okay, so Pablo, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna channel Fiat Jeff here. Do we really need a NIP for this? And oh, yeah. couldn't this be done with a standard sort of like you know like it's your problem to do your domain specific stuff, and we just use sort of like a, a common carrier for this for like a standard market. Well, you, you you need a way to standardize how the the clients and the data vending machines communicate, right? So each uh, by via suggestion of of Fiat Chef, uh, I changed the the kind number. So each use case is a, a specific kind number, which unlocks a bunch of really cool things. So, for example, transcriptions is a specific kind. Querying like a chat GPT thing is uh, another specific kind. Uh, but yeah, you need to you need to um, agree on a standard on how do do you communicate, right? So, where does the URL that points to the MP3 or to the YouTube video go, and how are you going to get it back? Is it going to be just like plain text, or is it going to be formatted in like this uh, this whisper people they use like text VTT thing? It's like a format that has the time stamping of all these parts of the of the transcription. So it, it gets very specific when you go into each specific use case. So for example, if you want a custom feed, uh, a custom feed, how are you going to get it back? How, how are you going to standardize so that, say, for example, you are an amethyst and you want to see trending users or trending topics based on my graph, for example. You, you want to get in a format that any client can understand, and because the, the 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 other side of implementing this kind of thing is you query an API, right? So I actually I actually registered a domain is endpointlessly.com. 
<laughs> because it's like you don't have an API. You just broadcast. I want uh, trending topics or I want uh, the most sapped note on whatever. And you don't care who serves you the data. You, you, you're not sending it to anyone. It's just You're just saying, I'm interested in this data and I'm willing to pay X. So you are not hitting any specific API to get this data, which means that anyone can serve the data. Are you like, are you concerned on like the precedent of this just in terms of like, okay, we have this like one AI transcription sort of kind of like data model thing that people may want. Do we start making like a nip for like every kind of possible API use that people may want? It's no, the same it, nip, so but it's different kinds, right? It's the same nip. I just reserve a thousand numbers, like a thousand, a thousand kinds, and whatever. We like this type of transcription goes on kind of whatever. But if you want whatever, a different something that doesn't fit. So, for example, one of the things that I was thinking of is, it's kind of the same if I want a transcription than if I want an OCR, right? Like I want this thing that is not text to be text. So I was waiting wh whether it should be the same kind. Uh, I ended up not going that, that route. Um, but I could argue that that it might be the same thing, right? It's I don't know how to handle this this thing. Please convert it to text. But yeah, we don't, we don't so, need that. So for the people that don't know, this is a very general purpose NIP. It just happens to be general purpose in terms of like asking for sort of like a API service, data as service. Right, it's for everything. It's not just for AI. That that's right. And one of the really cool things that it has is that it, it's composable. So it it can get from zero, like each job request can get zero to n uh, inputs, and then it produces one output. And then you can you can uh, compose a bunch of different jobs where the output of job one is the input of job two. So you could publish like ten jobs that are a chain. So I'm calling it job chaining. Uh, maybe chain link would be a better name. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a, a bunch of jobs that. Is that a shitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> and now, now I'm launch, launching this token with uh, MBK here as an advisor. It's fantastic. Uh, you right. should get in early. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, God. Uh, you know, if you, if you go, uh, uh, the various VCs are just specialized in this. You pitch this <laughs> idea that has a catchy name, they'll give you the, the seed money. Um, okay. Well, that's very cool. You know, if people are more interested in, like, want to learn more about it, there's like a link and, uh, you know, go read the NIP. One more thing before we move to NIP52 is uh, a bunch of AI people that are not Bitcoiners whatsoever. They they got in touch with me and they got like super excited. So a bunch of people started building on, on this NIP even before. Like I all of a sudden I changed nice. the kind number and like I rocked everybody. But there's has already been a demo on a on a conference, an AI conference in San Francisco last night. So yeah, there's a lot of excitement. We lost Pablo. Fuck. Am I out? You're still on. I think MVK is out. MVK, you back? Hey, I'm back. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, Starlink is rugging me here. <laughs> I get the same thing at my place up north. It's like for a minute, like, or maybe 30 seconds every hour or something like that. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for the boonies, but it doesn't really fully work in the boonies, right? Oh, all it takes is like a leaf falling down, and that's and right. You're screwed. <laughs> so yeah, so no, it's really cool, man. That like you know this nip is sort of bringing in people from the domain expertise in, because uh, it's kind of like you know what the fuck is Noster, right? <laughs> like I mean, you know, I'm working on the AI hot shiny new shit, right? Like <laughs> it's like what is this? Noster thing. Wow, uh, that's that's very cool. Do you, have you seen any of them sort of coming and participating on Noster in any other way or? Yeah, so so actually, Fedi uh, posted six thousand dollars in bounties uh, on Replit.com to create a bunch of like very simple. So I I open source MIT open source my code base, which with just a data vending machine that I'm using for Whisper, uh, and then they repurpose that, and the, you can just go to Replit, basically fork, change like the stupidest thing, and claim one of these bounties. Uh, so there is like a lot of there is. 
the NIP, I published the NIP officially like for PR last night, but there's already, a, uh, there are three of them doing transcriptions. There is one of them doing summarizations. There is one of them that I didn't write. Uh, there is one of them doing like this image generation thing. Um, there is video transcription, like there is all these things that are already starting to to pop up. But by people that were not into Noster, what not Bitcoiners, they were not into Noster. They're just seeing Noster as this protocol that allows you because before they were using Langchain, which is like this vertical integration where you say Asian one talks to Asian two, which talks to Asian three. So it's like very top down design. But with this thing, is just chaos, right? It's just free market. It's just everybody's just beating each other and competing to, to get the job done, uh, which is much more Bitcoin. <laughs> Very cool. I mean, e even even if it's just used for like APIs, I mean, that that's the thing that I'm most excited about with it. I mean, I don't, I'm not an AI guy, so I don't really care about some of that stuff. But Me I mean, standardizing AIs and, and getting, getting specific, like, I mean, you can monetize that. I wrote about it like two days ago where it's like we haven't seen any convergence on APIs because there hasn't been a monetary incentive to do it. You got to build a building billing system. You got to build user base. You got to build all that and expose it to the user like this could be paid for APIs in and of itself. Think of Twilio, man. Mm -hmm. Somebody could create a little Twilio bridge, right, where they can send text messages and also get new phone numbers all from Noster. That'd be really cool. And, and you don't need to KYC with, oh, with Twilio. You don't need to KYC yeah. with all these different API services. You can just pay and access them and someone else KYCs for you. You know, does because, you know, I always felt like Noster, for example, is a, replace, a replacement for PubNub, right? PubNub is like this billion dollar company that like charges an arm and a leg because it does work. So... You know, Noster sort of creates the same idea of, of web sockets where, you know, you can you have a like a, a, a um, right on time sort of pull and push of that information on the client. Now, you know, like you could be connecting this shit with some other APIs out there, including PubNub, too. <laughs> so, like, you, you can push into other clients that are like PubNub capable. Uh, you can push into, I don't know, Apple, uh, Apple notifications or something like this shit could get really crazy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Very cool. All right. So uh, this one is uh, kind of cool. Uh, uh, NIP 52 calendar events, calendars, calendar events, RSP, RSVPs by Terry Yu. So it's a request for comments. Uh, another one that was in my early pet peeves, I always felt like Noster is the perfect replacement for call dev on public calendars it's terrible for private calendars but like for public <laughs> calendars it's amazing right like i mean fuck call dev you know all the implementations <laughs> suck and most of the industry doesn't want to use it and uses microsoft exchange which also sucks so uh, i don't know i'm pretty excited about this i hope it's, it's interesting i haven't read the nip but i hope it uh, it's the right uh, solution for the problem you guys have any comments on this one i i hope they dog food it at nostrica uh, or Nostrasia. Um, that would be really cool. That's the reason why it's being written. Like, NIP52 cool. is being written because of the conference for Nostrasia. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, like, who is going? Is everyone here going to Tokyo? Yes. Yes. That's my plan. I, I don't think so. Maybe last minute FOMO. <laughs> Boom. We'll make it happen. I am too. So, Tony, you're the only one on the call not, huh. not going? Maybe I have More to pressure. That more pressure <laughs> you know it is japan so uh it's not the perfect place to get a house together <laughs> there'll be like <laughs> one room for everybody to be in we'll get like co connecting pods or something that's right <laughs> <laughs> and we can share the bugs yeah <laughs> the so that's right no it, it should be really cool i'm looking forward to it same all right clients uh, Milian, do you wanna do you wanna do the the, the quick rundown of uh, of Primal? Yeah, sure. So we have Primal iOS, Android, and web app releases this week. Uh, they're actually going out today, so we're just like waiting for Apple to approve our build that we submitted last night to test flight, uh, and we're pressing the button. So this is really fresh news you guys are getting. Uh, so uh, the iOS test flight two release it's build 0.23.1 new features uh, we have media uploads in the editor we 
uh, have um, better refreshing, kind of faster refreshing home feeds. There's the new notes button that kind of pops down and all of that. It's, it's quite fast and slick. Added the, the context menu to notes. Uh, now you can actually log in with the MPUB. You couldn't in the previous build. And then for the fixes, uh, notifications not showing up for some users has been fixed. I think you all experienced that at some point, actually, in the pr uh, early oh, preview builds. Can I break the news in one of the features? Do it. Edit profile is here, baby. Edit profile. <laughs> it's groundbreaking, isn't it? Groundbreaking. <laughs> It's kind of like those, those uh, you know, common things who were kind of left to, till the end. We did all the hard stuff first, so it's time to uh, clean up and, and implement every little feature that people need. You got that delete button for NVK, right? <laughs> it's a lot to, like, to, to bootstrap, right? Like if you're building from scratch a client, like there's quite a for, – for every month that, that like this project continues, right, there is new features – plus everything else. Yeah, those microblogging clients, that they don't seem like much when you use them, but actually there are quite a few details in there uh, to, <laughs> to get them done. Properly. I mean, have you seen uh, uh, how many megabytes a, a tweet page takes on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, going down the list. So fixes, uh, notifications have been fixed for everyone um, in this build. The double posting on slow connections reported by NVK also has been fixed. Uh, a reply showing up as duplicate of an, an existing note has been fixed. That was a funny one. And uh, in some cases, we had the reply UI getting stuck and you kind of, kind of couldn't reply. I think it had to do with like uh, typing in emojis. So all of that should be much more robust. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this release. Uh, I think it's a daily driver contender. Uh, it, it has the kind of the core features working reliably enough that it can be used as a daily driver. Still missing, you know, whole sections like uh, DMs and stuff like that, which are coming in the upcoming builds. So that's iOS. The web app, NVK already broke the news about the edit profile page. As as is custom, as is customary. Yes, as is custom, exactly. Like sorry, sorry that I had to uh, announce the iOS uh, release here instead of you. Okay, <laughs> very disappointed. <laughs> For the fixes in the web app, we kind of spent some time working with kind of relay connections and making those things more reliable. So the the whole UX around posting and performing other actions should be uh, a lot more solid now in the latest build of the web app. And then uh, coming up uh, are the kind of final features like the ability to set your relays and a few more kind of uh, small features in the web app, but getting very close to uh, version 1.0. The very last thing we're going to do on the web app is the whole login slash onboarding UX uh, maybe it's counterintuitive that we're doing that last. My thought process for that was we kind of wanted, like while while the app is in preview, we wanted to get feedback from people who already know how to use Noster, so who already know how to use the browser extension and stuff like that. So so that's been useful, but now we're getting to the point where we want to open it up to, to everyone. So looking forward to implementing that onboarding UX in the coming uh, couple of weeks. Well, I mean, you know, there is not a lot of new people in Nostra anyways, right? So, like, it's only nerds right now. So, there's no rush on it. Yeah. So, let's see if we can help there, right? Like, it would be more people if more clients were better at onboarding and Primal uh, Web App uh, doesn't even try to do that. So, we'll try <laughs> very soon. Android. So, last week, we shipped the, the alpha that's... Um, uh, essentially read-only, but uh, the, the reading and browsing works quite well. The, the feeds are very fast, and uh, you can explore and do stuff like that. This week's build incorporates uh, the first uh, actions that you can perform. So the simple actions like like, repost, or uh, you know, uh, create a post, currently plain text, that works. 
Uh, we also added the automatic refresh of the feeds that you subscribe to. So if, if the, your list of feeds changes on, in the web app or in the iOS app, it will be reflected immediately in your Android app. And then we added some quite a bit of infrastructure into the app, like a whole testing framework and um, some kind of uh, the improvements in the way we handle um, uh, accounts, uh, uh, storing accounts locally. And then we had a f uh, problem with uh, logging in with your ANSEC if you had some white space in there, so that's been fixed. So those are the, those are the uh, updates for Primal for this week. Cool. One question, Million. For the feed, you mentioned the synchronization between Android or between iOS and, and the web app when you're changing feeds. How, how are you doing that? Is that like new 51s defining each each feed, or how, how is it supposed to work? No, so on um, in Primal, you can create your feeds in a custom way. So a feed could be someone like another user's feed that you subscribe to. So you, you add that to your list of feeds. We had that for a while, but also it could be a hashtag or it could be actually any search result, and the search is performed on Primal, right? So uh, you can have a potentially a complex search query that produces some results, and, and if you find you're using that type of a search query frequently, you can add it to your list of feeds that are, that are available to you in all the clients or like right on the main screen. So when you manage your list of feeds in settings in primal settings or in, by adding feeds in any of the apps your list of feeds is then reflected in all of the clients and you're using the uh, the custom app like the nip 71 i think it is for for that we're not using any nips for that and we should probably uh, okay. look into that uh, okay, um, gotcha. because uh, i'm not sure how well our kind of search results uh, feeds would fit into that. Maybe they would fit it nicely. So that's something for us to look into. All right. Uh, that was a few a few items. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about the Android stuff. Yeah, I, I can finally post and have like a good contender. You know, not just Amethyst <laughs> on Android. We need uh, we need a few in all in all platforms, right? Yeah, I think even from a selfish kind of primal point of view, you we we need great multiple great clients in all of the platforms for for the value proposition to make sense if we're if we really want to uh, have a credible argument that we're different than twitter well there need to be many credible uh, clients so and i think we do have many credible clients i think like once we start having like multiple more like feature mature clients in each platform is going to be nice to start seeing them sort of like starting to like focus on different things. So, you know, like one client sort of like goes in a certain direction, another one goes in a different direction. So it's not just like yeah. all of them look like Twitter mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. or X, sorry, X, X.com. <laughs> no, no. I think out of spite, we continue calling it Twitter forever. Oh, forever. <laughs> yeah. And by you the way, know, Tony, sorry, sorry to cut you off there, NVK. Uh, there will be quite a few Android updates coming up. So our awesome. our lead Android dev just got back from vacation and he's ready <laughs> to go, man. Tickets are understandable. <laughs> now, we're, now it's like, we're really pumped. Dude. There's going to be lots of good stuff in the coming weeks. By the way, uh, when can I have um, both NSEC Bunker and my own key on Primal? So... So that I can have my my key that is not ready for NSEC bunker yet, uh, but I then I have a few other accounts uh, that are inside NSEC bunker, but I'm I using them through Primal. If only you had some people on the call who are uh, competent to talk <laughs> related about to the project, and, right? And and Primal. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is exciting for us to implement for sure. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll get to v1.0 with all the edit profile page type of um, uh, features first, and then we'll be looking into this as potentially as a part of our onboarding um, overhaul or onboarding implementation. Definitely, it's an attractive option. So I'm not committing to 
a date if if that's what you're you, like all questions all developer questions that start with a when like get like vague two answers weeks. or two weeks exactly <laughs> actually if your question is when the answer is yes <laughs> there you go and then uh and then i just have to keep on uh you know annoying million on uh, dms and that all will right. probably work <laughs> Hey, I mean, if you want that feature, you could always use Snort, so just saying. There you go. And there's that, for sure. Can I use that's, Snort that's on iPhone? Of Noster, isn't iOS? It? iOS, guys, iOS. It relieves the pressure on other client devs. Like, it, you know, Amethyst hasn't added list creation yet. And he's like, oh, I don't know how to do it properly. Like, just go somewhere else to do it and don't worry about it. So it almost relieves pressure. I wish I, wish I could, like, handle inbound customer support issues by just saying, oh, use some other wallet. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a great point. It's kind of cool that we can do that in Oster. Yeah, use Snart. If you want it today, use Snart. We lost him again. Yeah, I think we lost him. <laughs> you know, I was contemplating to do this uh, podcast from my place up north as well on Starlink. That would have been too too much. Two Starlinks in, on one call. <laughs> two Starlink failings. In what? It's two Starlinks in one region. Like that. Uh. Yeah, actually about like two or three hours away from each other. So you guys would be able to compare if we're down at the same time or what the lag is. <laughs> But it's usually not this bad. Like, I've never had it this bad of what uh, MVK is seeing here. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yes. you're in. All right. Turn off all the cameras. All right. All right. I'm on LT. Screw Elon. <laughs> so, I was talking about <laughs> being able to have multiple accounts and the company accounts because of the NSEC bunker. You know, we're in a bit of a, a lull, right, of like new users coming to Noster, which is kind of like normal. They'll come probably in cycles. Um, but like a huge win right now would be to have to be able to safely give employees a key of a company account mm -hmm. to go spam Noster with company marketing, right? Uh, so the That's clients right. need support in Sec Bunker. Two weeks, Million? Agreed. 100%. You got it. Two weeks? No, we need on-air commitment. And that's consistently going to stay two weeks. <laughs> you got it, two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Dermas, version 1.6 between square uh, round bracket 7. Less bad. Show Nasser address, username, and support abbreviation underscore usernames. Re-add NIP5 badges to profiles. We, we want to be verified, self-verified. Uh, add space when tagging users in post if needed. Added padding under word, word count on long form account. Very nice. By the way, uh, non, I, I, think, I think the this pods show note, the Bitcoin one, uh, I think I get over the the size limit for JSON, so I can't post in any client long form um, the show notes. Sorry, long on short form show notes. Shouldn't this be a long post anyway? It's not as spammy. It's not as much fun. I want to ah, spam I see, I on see. the micro blog. I see. Makes exactly. Sense. I want to spam. Well, well, each one can get its own note. Each uh, category. Then you're spamming. It's going to be in a chain, a nice chain. <laughs> a little <Yeah>. data chain. <laughs> yeah. And they should all be verified in a block too, each of them. All right. Mr. Snort, do you want to read your updates? Um, okay. Um, these are really old though. <laughs> this is from like three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> Damn it. That, that's <laughs> why I didn't read mine from the list. I just read mine from my own list. <laughs> I mean, that's the last release that we've done. I guess it was like three weeks ago. So Yeah, that's the problem. We, we follow yeah. release numbers, folks. We are <laughs> yeah. old school boomers here. We don't do this web thing where shit just updates. Yeah, I guess there isn't actually anything really new <laughs> because I've been working on Zapstream <laughs> mostly. Uh, with okay. Snort. Just mostly like fixes and stuff like that. I've been doing on Snort. Like the, the pages should be much faster now. I know a lot of people were complaining about Snort not working for them. If you have like a really long contact list or something, it um it was really slow. So that should be fixed now as well. So, but apart from that, 
there hasn't really been any changes because I've been busy on on Zapstream. You you added Insect Bunker. Oh, I added Insect Bunker. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do my release notes for me? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this is going to be the Pablo show. Yeah, the Pablo show. No, I didn't announce that, right? I, 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 we tested it, right? We tested it. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't announce that. Yeah, I guess if I was doing my, my next release notes, it would be in that, whatever that's going to be. Um, yeah, and like, oh, wait, don't, don't worry. It takes about like it's not, it's not going to be out until probably tomorrow evening. So you guys have time to, to call it up. <laughs> I guess I could uh, I could uh, draft a release right now just for the show. That's the right. NVK mm-hmm. pod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but you have to format the the URL in like a funny way, right? So it's yeah, kind it's of weird. it's like a little awkward to connect with the bunker, but yeah, this it works. Kind of, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I, I've used it a bunch of times, so it works. Okay. Uh, we we will get to Zap Stream is lower down on uh, on the list. Okay. I just want to say we at Primal, we really like Snort. It's, it's a really nice client. Uh, I like the way you render the feeds there, uh, like uh, great taste in the way you size things and the, the way, you know, like all the, everything is laid out. Great feature set too. One of our favorite web clients for sure. Carnage is the, the master of layout, so you can thank him. And uh, <laughs> right. I actually have been working a lot on the, there's an, like a new design in the pipeline. So there's like, a complete reskin pretty much it's um it's uh, also in progress but you know that's also what i've been working on for that for snort nice iris messenger version 0.2.0 created devcontainer.json added a link to the desktop app on the about page move page move profile and follow event indexes to Lucky JS, uh, improved DM loading, read and write with relays from the user's contact list. Logo click now goes to the last open feed. Added QR button to the menu. Update relay pool. Amethyst version zero point seventy point six. New post relay choice. Uh, select to select all options. That's cool. New post relay choice fixes missing switch when URL is too long. Uh, adds missing opt in when using global scope. A refactor uh, crypto hacks back, uh, back classes and dependencies. Simplifies relay connection status. Uh, moves OK HP client on URL preview queries uh, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, just dropped uh, version 71 in the uh, release net, so 15 hours ago. They added uh, geohashing, so you can kind of uh, have like a little three-mile radius and pin a uh, location to a node, I think. So um, I haven't seen what that looks like yet, but uh, it seems oh boy. a cool idea. I mean, there's two ways that could go. That would be a great uh, <laughs> yeah. decentralized dark market for you to do drops uh, <laughs> or a censorship hell. <laughs> Either or. <laughs> yeah, well, well, three mile radius. Like, have fun searching for a drop for that. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, maybe there's orange smoke or something when it's dropped. Who knows? Also depends on the on the. <laughs> Anyways, very cool. Coracle, uh, zero point two point three four. Fix mentions on Safari. Fix quote on kind three. Thirty thousand twenty three events. Fix Safari performance issues. Small notes, display bug fixes. And then on uh, 0.2.33, uh, a bunch of other fixes. Uh, added rendering support for kind 1985, 9802, 1063. Oh, wait. Uh, isn't the image header the one that was contentious? Yeah. Or no? Yeah. How do you guys feel about that? Like Now that I have uh, a bunch of client people here, uh, uh, are you guys supporting the image headers? What's uh, what's the story? Yeah, Snort supports it. It's supported it for forever, pretty much. Yeah, I kind of like it for because I wanted to um, add like torrents, web torrents on Snort, and this is kind of like a, a middle ground between like direct HTTP links to images and and like web torrent links because you can have both in the in the file header. 
Hmm. That's that's kind of why I liked it. But yeah, a lot of other people didn't like it, so <laughs> it hasn't really uh, gone anywhere. Uh, I don't know. Like I, I I find it cool. Just not sure. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just the way it was implemented. Was the contention? I don't know. It's a it's a hard I think one that to was, tell. That was I problem. think that was it. Yeah. 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 That was mainly it. But you know what? Like there is no other way, right? Like especially when you when you work on like decentralized tech and sort of like open permissionless protocols. It's always how it's gonna be. People are just gonna like you know force their preferences and hopefully people take it or shoot them like you know it's like <laughs> there's no like it just is right uh as, as don't ask for permission that's cool but also you need to be self-aware a little bit uh, if you have a user base right and oh, yeah the, uh, some other clients have their own user base which are non uh trivial in size it's good to be aware of whether your changes are going to break other stuff. Exactly. That's exactly why he made it the default. He's putting his user base behind the feature, you know? Right. That's right. It's, uh, it's, it's seriously, it's like very similar to proof of work, right? Like it's like you have like y- your, your weight, right? In the network is the size of your user base in Nostra here. And, uh, you know, if you put that behind, you might get your feature to be adopted by others. Is it a nice thing to do? There goes MVK. Yeah. Starlink again. <laughs> we know what he's saying. He, he got X'd. <laughs> yeah. He must have tweeted something bad about Elon. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, Elon was not happy with us not using X. It's like, oh yeah? Well, <laughs> no Starlink for you. <laughs> um yeah, it's, all, it's almost like browser wars in, in a much, much smaller way there, right? Like with the clients, you know, going a little bit, what do you call that, rogue here and there, right? It's fine. It, I think it's kind of cool, actually. Let's, let's see how it plays out. I kind of like it that the clients are fighting. I mean, it's good to just even test shit out, too. Elon, stop censoring. <laughs> Stop censoring Noster on Starlink. Okay. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll bend we'll bend the knee. We'll bend the knee. We like X. I have a blue check. I have a blue <laughs> we'll check. The, <laughs> we'll call it X after all. It's not Twitter. Just let MVK have a Starlink, please. I'm gonna turn off my camera too, just in case. Do it. I know I'm beautiful, but okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, nas.social version 0.159. Add loading placeholder for notes contest, fix several crashes, add Dutch, Japanese, Persian translations. Blipster version 0.7.4. Fix video where it gets stuck in detail. Change icon on podcast, on podcast, on postcard of share. Fixes in writing a new post. Fixes in search. Um, Noster 1.3.0 login ends with NSEC bunker, including support self hosted version. Share screenshots of posts, improve zap amount selector, show previous name when someone changes profile. Noster Mo 1.8.0 follow tags, follow communities, bug fix. Arcade version 0.3.0-beta. Add basic AI chat. Add custom contact allows NIP5. Save channel to private data. Swipeable reply layout. New message forms. I haven't tried this one, Arcade. It's a, it's a really good client. I talk with the, with the guys. They are seriously building a, a real client, a, like professionally done client. Uh, they're trying new things. They are pushing boundaries. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting project. It's a Telegram uh, clone, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Do they have uh, forward secrecy? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, so can't use. Kids, your DMs will be de-anonymized if you lose your keys. I always assume that. Yeah, but if you have a, a Telegram-like UI, people will assume that is going to remain private, right? Uh, you can always tell, take a screenshot, right? So, 
Yeah, but it's not the same, right? Like, I mean, if you lose the key, you can, you can like, download everything, right? Yeah, you have cryptographic proof that, uh, yeah, you said something very, uh, <laughs> yeah, that you don't want. But you should, you should always just assume that everything's going to leak <laughs> other than your big yes. cookies. Moving on to Crust Noster version 0.22. Remove a mount tag from Zap Receipt event builder, add a linear alt tag, add support for handling NIP40 ex expiration timestamp, make Primage optional in Zap event builder, docs, and a bunch of other things. Are any of you guys using the, the Crust Noster? No, but why did they remove the amount tag? What's that about? It's already on the, on the Lightning invoice, I guess. Uh, maybe the Crust Foundation doesn't allow it? Because <laughs> we, we're validating the amount tag as well, so I'm, I'm confused why they would remove that. We use the Rust Noster Relay for some stuff. Or sorry, the Rust Noster Library for some stuff, but I really don't. Not extensively enough to like know what's going on here. Okay. I probably have a, a very long delay, don't I? You're good. No, that was five seconds. <laughs> All right. Highlighter version 0 0.7.0. Jay Stark fucked his dystopia. Go, Pablo. All right. This is a very old release. Uh, so I'll just go on the, <laughs> on the notes. Uh, create encrypted long form events where you can write edit notes. Oh, yeah. So basically the idea is that you can create the equivalent of long form notes. Uh, so whatever you would see on, on Avla News and stuff like that, uh, but encrypted. So which is cool because you can do, like you can take proper notes and you can edit them and it's fully composable. So you can... Uh, at note whatever, like you can you can uh, tag other notes and they will be displayed, rendered properly. The idea is because uh, this is using NDK that it will support as many kind different kinds as possible, uh, which is very cool because you could have a note where you are writing your thoughts about whatever and you can embed within your notes. You can embed uh, highlights, you can embed a podcast, you can embed songs, you can embed saps, you can embed whatever, any kind of, uh, literally kind, any event <laughs> event kind from Nuster, you can embed it and it will be displayed properly, which is very, very cool. Um, I've, been, I've been using it to reflect on things and actually that's the, the verb that I'm using for the timing on the, on the new UX that I'm building uh, for Highlighter. Um, uh, instead of just notes or private notes, I'm calling it reflect because the idea is that as you encounter um, content and highlights and, and stuff like that that make you think, that are yeah, thought-provoking, you, you might create a, a longer private note where you uh, create like a narrative arc on why those notes are interesting in whatever way possible. Uh, so it's, it's a, it is an experiment, but it feels, um, yeah, it feels very interesting. Very cool. Uh, and the other thing is, yeah, also very old. Uh, it's a Chrome extension, uh, 0.1, which is very, very cool because it allows you to, it's, it's a Chrome extension. Uh, it's super, super uh, interesting because <laughs> I, I didn't want to request the permission as every single Chrome extension does for absolutely everything. So this extension does not have access to anything that you're doing. It doesn't. It cannot see the website that you are visiting. It cannot like it doesn't have those permissions. Uh, so whenever you want to to use it to highlight something, you explicitly call into the into the into the extension, which is the right UX. Is you hit a button. And that button will create a highlight, but the, the extension cannot spy on whatever you're doing, um, so, which is something that I was very interested in because I don't want to be accused of stealing people's data or anything like that. Uh, you can also use it for bookmarks. So if you're visiting a website and you don't highlight some, anything, but you click on save to Noster or something like that, uh, it will create a bookmark for the website that you're doing within an E51 list, uh, within, which is you know, compatible with any client that is using E51 lists, which is very cool. It's a, it's a very uh, cool way of bringing the web, uh, whatever you're doing on the web, to, to Nuster in a way that is, again, composable, and you can mix it with whatever else you're doing on, on Nuster. 
We were talking about wanting to use something like this for um, Austin bit Debs. Uh, so, you know, we, we go through a list of like 20 or 30 articles and they, they use their own extensions for like highlighting things. We want to be able to use this for so that we can highlight every single article we're going to talk about for the next month's bit Debs, and then uh, just read from that. Maybe give out the private key to like all three or four different um you know, admins of the of the Bitcoin, uh, the BitDebs group, and then go from there. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know, really love Highlighter and, and what it could do. I mean, and great fucking domain, too. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a cool domain. Hey, uh, so, Pablo, what, what are the actual news news since we have the old release? Ah, uh, let's see. So I, someone, uh, a guy from, from Nuster started helping me redesign the, <laughs> the UX and it's looking very, very nice. Uh, I'm bringing in uh, this concept of margin notes, which are sort of like if you think of a friend of yours lends you a book and that book has a bunch of highlights and your friend wrote notes on the margin. When you open the book, the first thing you will read is the margin note because it's the intersection between your friend uh, or someone you admire or someone you care about and a book that is interesting. So I'm going to try and make uh, this idea of margin notes sort of like the the highest possible signal within, within Highlighter. Uh, and I'm mixing with a lot of things with... Um, with this list concept. So I'm going for a flow where you start with discovery, which is discovery of interesting things on whatever topic. So I'm bringing in data vending machines to highlight, to, to discover these interesting, interesting topics uh, that, you know, you care about AI or you care about Bitcoin or you care about gardening or about whatever, sex, whatever it is. Um, and you find content that is relevant and then you organize it in lists. Uh, you can take notes, notes within the list. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very complex uh, UX, but it's very, very powerful. Uh, you can within the highlighter interface, you can create uh, new NPUFs that are associated with your main NPUF. So you can have like, a, so for example, for NDK, I have NDK to do list, which has its own NPUF. And whenever I write something in that list, uh, it's not created with my NPUF, it's created with that list's and pub. Uh, and people can follow that list. People can comment on whatever I'm adding to that list. They can sub to the top of the list, whatever they want me to work on first for NDK. It's a very powerful, confusing, <laughs> confusing UX. You know what it reminds me of? What? Waves. Remember Google Wave? Yes, dude. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be way simpler than that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> One very cool thing that happened is that someone requested a feature on Highlighter and it seemed like really complicated, but someone added it to Highlighter. It was like um, PDF extraction, like extracting data from, like math data from a PDF. And I, it, it's a feature that is available on Highlighter and I didn't write it. No one wrote it. It's just a data vending machine that knows how to do that thing, which kind of blew my mind. <laughs> By the way, do you know what the Starlink speed is right now? 1.1 megabyte down, and it says uh, 3 megabytes up. Uh, and I am on the tether to my phone yeah, now on sure. LTE, which has this massive delay. You guys are going to have to keep on going with this list, man. I might actually quit. <laughs> Rugged. Rugged again. You know, it's officially the Pablo podcast. <laughs> Sabotage the Starlink. <laughs> Seriously, keep on going, guys. Okay, Avla News. Welcome to Noster. I have no idea what that means. Oh, adds ability to follow hashtags and filter feed by hashtag, which is cool. Onboarding flow for new Noster users. I think this, like what Million was saying before, onboarding is something that we are absolutely horrible at at the moment. I really, really hope that we get a whole lot better. And I think we're going to get there. Uh, add settings page for profile and relay list. Okay, Mostro. Who 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 wants to do Mostro? Million. Keep going, Pablo. No, fuck it. <laughs> Someone else do it. <laughs> <laughs> we go around the table. Okay, Mostro. Uh, this is a project I've never heard of. Have you guys do do you know about it? Yeah. What, what does it do? It's like a peer to peer buy and sell Bitcoin over with Lightning. Same as like um, RoboSats. Cool. All right. So I'll read it read it through. Um, a Lightning Network peer-to-peer -peer exchange uh, built on Oster, okay. Um, first draft of Mostro fee, uh, fixes on saving fee, a limit order amount, retry test, 
first commit on nip12 filter, nip12 fiat name uh, filter tag, uh, small test on feed calculations, add settings file. Um, have you had any of you guys use this? It's it's kind of very early early stages, like because they have like their their own Rust. They're building it in Rust, basically. It's like um, a bot that you DM over Noster, and then you can do orders and stuff for buy and sell Bitcoin with Lightning. Yeah, based on the on the change log, it does come come off as something that's kind of pretty early, but um, it's an exciting use case. Yeah, and I actually talked to them a little bit. I was wondering if, like, how far along they were and stuff, so that I could. I was. I mean, maybe it would be really cool to have this in Snort, but you know. Yeah, or I was even thinking like building building something like that straight in the Mutiny Wallet. I mean, if someone rests too, then you know we can use that and just like I don't know, maybe like do direct sales straight from the wallet itself. Like that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a great fit. It uses the HODL invoice, you know, same as. RoboSat, so you can, anyone can run the the back end because it's open source. So you could have like a and and who's on the other side of the whole invoice? Just like a, an escrow kind of. Well, they they are holding the the payment basically it. until the fiat. Yeah. So you're trusting the provider that they won't drag you. I mean, they can. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, I guess. <laughs> like who they're, who they're sending the funds to. Yeah, with Lightning-based escrow, it's not the most trustless with the third party in the middle doing the validation. I mean, I think even RoboSats kind of has a little bit of that problem. But, um, you know, all it takes is like one or two times for like, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the provider to like rug in any way. Like it's only a concern if they're colluding with like the sender or sorry, the recipient when they're supposed to be escrowing it for... Uh, yeah, so as long as they're not both the parties or colluding with both the parties, it should work without much concern. Which I think is fine. I think it's just important to be aware of this. Uh, yeah. Uh, of of this uh, trust model because uh, the the alternative is far worse, right? Like if you go to just a, a centralized exchange, the alternative is way, way, way worse. Agreed. I can go do the next one. Uh, Wave Lake um, podcasters can now pull music directly into shows, and their listeners can compensate all parties in real time. Uh, that's pretty cool. Directly within the podcast player, any amount, any frequency. Yeah, that's. Uh, I haven't used Wave Lake yet, but uh, it seems like a really cool project um, for music. Uh, you know, people get paid for music. I guess I can do the next one and maybe two of them because it's extremely short. Uh, Nostra's app, add wallet selector. I have no idea what Noster's app is. And I guess the next one is No Store. Signing extension for Mac OS now available on, on the App Store. This must be really old news because I've been using it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last, I guess I'll do the last one. Noster Wallet Connect from Albi on the Umbral App Store. Okay. Noster Wallet Connect from Albi. All right. Bitcoin projects leveraging Noster. Uh, poster. Uh, proof of concept for doing page on using Noster. Oh, that's cool. I had not heard of this before. Anyone used it? No. Is is Dan Held doing that? Or not Dan Held. Uh, <laughs> the other, Dan Gold. Is Dan Gold doing that one? Dan Gold? No idea. Never heard of it. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting if, if it were Dan Held, though. <laughs> yes. I think he's probably still busy with his uh, Node case. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Bitpack, publicly auditable uh, cooperatives that live on Bitcoin, uh, mentioned in the list last week, uses Bitcoin multisig to enable group control and voting happens over Noster. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the next one here. Uh, yes. UniWallet Beta now just came out. Uh, it came out a week or two ago. Yeah, I, I think the Noster Wallet Connect, yeah, we, we put in here an integrated social tipping with Noster Wallet Connect. I, I think that's like the number one feature that people have been using. I mean, we don't see, like we just see screenshots and things on social media, but that's been like the number one thing. I, I want to see more wallets using Noster Wallet Connect in some way. I mean, we even use it for subscriptions too, and anyone can build on top of that. So um, yeah, super uh Super Bowls. I wasn't. I, I didn't care for Nostra Wallet Connect when it first came out, but it ended up being like a pretty clean architecture, especially for asynchronous stuff. Um, just anything Nostra based for asynchronous is just is just fantastic. 
Yeah, we went a bit back and forth, you and me, Tony, on, on how amazing these, like the Nostar Wallet Connect and, and this type of uh, sort of RPC calls are over Nostar. It's like this integration, like it's, it's kind of the same way that NSEC Banker works. It's, it's such a cool architecture where you just say, I want something and something happens. It's like, it's fantastic. Yeah, I really want to see one for like Ellen URL pay, but on yeah. Nostar Wallet Connect. Um, that way you can get an invoice from a recipient whenever um, and then it just pays it like it would definitely make zapping pretty slow. But if it's just like set it and forget it kind of thing, I mean, it's tips at the end of the day, right? Like they don't need to go out immediately. So like I would love to see the reverse that way we can get something non-custodial for receives. That's all Nostra based. There was a proposal for that in the LN URL mm -hmm. repo as far as I know. Well, it's in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> It was basically like a way of ex kind of doing HTTP over Nostra. I don't think it got any traction. Oh. All right. Well, we'll probably uh, we'll probably have to spin it up with some of that open stats money we got. All right. I, I'll do the next one. It's a uh, Oak Node version zero dot three dot seven. This is an LND node management thing. <laughs> Support for NIP forty seven. So they have Nostra Wallet Connect as well. That's cool. Everyone has Nostra Wallet Connect. Nice. I also had the the same feeling about Nostra Wallet Connect that you guys had <laughs> in that I didn't really like it in the beginning, but once I actually implemented it, I was like, this is pretty nice. And that's kind of what led me into doing um, NSEC Bunker as well. And I kind of was expecting them to be the same NIP though, for some reason. I don't know why their two NIPs are like so similar, but they're kind of different in how they do the replies and stuff, which is a little annoying. Yeah, I think NIP46, we, uh, we need to rewrite NIP46. Oh, well, there's that as well. Yeah, I could, I could barely <laughs> understand the protocol just from reading the NIP. I was like, yeah, I read this uh, NIP, but I really have no idea how it works. Yeah. I was reading it. I was like, OK, I don't understand it. I'll just go and read the code. <laughs> if this whole thing with us, with the guests reading through their list goes too well, then Navike is going to do it that way all the time. <laughs> we have to have a few hic hiccups here and there. Right? Um, <laughs> all right. Oh, you're there. Okay. He, he's here for the comedic <laughs> relief. He's just laughing in the background. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's like it's impossible to talk with the amount of delay I have. So I'm just listening and laughing. All right. That's cool. That's cool. Perfect. All right. Noster Birdside Bridge scans who you follow on Twitter and generates Noster profiles that mirror their posts. Um, I doubt that this still works. Uh, I was going to say, I'm yeah. pretty sure all developers got cut off. <laughs> you want to hear a funny story, guys? <laughs> so we had this hilarious onboarding flow in our iOS app before we released it. We were kind of building it where you could point uh, to a Twitter profile, just like t type a Twitter handle, and we'll scrape everything in real time and give you like uh, all the metadata for your Nostra account to be created. And kind of one click later, you have a Nostra account uh, based on any Twitter profile. It worked perfectly. And Elon rugged us like one week before we launched our public beta. So so we had to remove that feature from, from the product. It, it was like, it was such a bummer because it was such a hilarious feature. And if we had launched a week earlier, we would have tripped out that it's like Elon being too scared of us. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to clap when you guys hear the clap. Say something. Something. Yes. Right. Okay, so it's a pretty short delay now. Uh, part of the problem is that I was in a screen room that's all metal. So that didn't help with the LTE. Faraday cage? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, guys. I mean, you know, like, I, I mean, thank you. You guys did a good, a good enough job. <laughs> <laughs> Just good enough, not we too good. We didn't want it to be too good. We get a bigger zap split now, do we, from the, the podcast? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna. <laughs> that's right. We each get five sats. There's still a delay, but we'll, we'll try. Uh, where did you guys stop? I kind of, I, I fell asleep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it works. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the second project spotlight, so basically, I just read the Agora first one. Socialist next. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, why did you guys continue? This is great. I'm enjoying listening. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. God damn it. He's in the pool right now. 
Okay, we need to mess up pretty badly as we read this stuff. I'll do the next one. Uh, Agorasocial.app by Andrew. Uh, client that focuses on following topics similar to Reddit. It uses rssla.noster.moe. Uh, I didn't even know .moe was a TL, TLDR or whatever. <laughs> TLD. TLD. Uh, to generate a Noster. <laughs> yeah. To generate a Noster profile for subreddits that coincide with topics followed. Um, you can follow cord cutters. It'll generate a Noster profile from the RSS feed of r slash cord cutters and then add hashtag cord cutters hashtag to every post. Um, so just like a way to mirror. And it's a fork of Coracle, which is really cool. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, I'm surprised they're also pulling stuff from Reddit considering that that is like ruggable too now. So <laughs> we'll see how long that project lives. Well, this is an old note, uh, release note. So maybe they're not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they already shut down. <laughs> so it goes in Nostraland. All right, Nostr.kiwi. Uh, this is a cool progressive web app. Um, so a place for you to share notes and curate content in communities. So it's like, a, I think it's NIP172, these um, Reddit-like communities. It's very cool. It uses NDK, so it also supports uh, Insect Bunker. And it works. it's like very slick. This is like the first, uh, other than Mutiny, but Mutiny I, I would consider <laughs> something else. But it's like the first progressive web app that is not Rust-based, that it feels like a real native client. It's very, very, very well done. It's very cool. Bosch on PWAs. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man. Okay, zap it live. Who's going to do it? Hey, can, we, can we pick an order? Because I feel like we're going in random order right now. It's Nostr, man. <laughs> there it's is no Nostr. order. It's there is chaos. no blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this one. I'll do this one. Uh, zap it live. Put any content behind Bitcoin Lightning Paywall. Um, any content, such as a blog or a video, audio, picture, PDF. You can create a paywall link and share it to everyone. And you can do split payments. Split payments. Um, split the zap or forward all payments to your main wallet. Okay. They, they support prisms, I guess. That's cool. Have you guys tried Zap It Live? I have. I think I've tried it a few months ago, or I've tried something like it a few months ago. Yeah, it's a little bit, I guess it's a little bit like um, Lightning Video. It's like um, just paywalled content distribution, I guess. Nostri Field um, it offers broadcasts and export services. So you can download a copy of your data. When you use the service, all your data will be broadcasted to major relays on the network. Uh, Design to ensure the data is widely distributed and makes it resist, uh, resistant to censorship. I haven't heard of that one before, but this is that's really cool. That's a, a good time to mention that one because um, I don't know if you guys heard about the was it Eden Nosterland yeah. is shutting down. Yeah, mm. yeah, saw that. Yeah, so this would be <laughs> the perfect time to open this up and back up all your data. All right, I'll do the next one. Satellite CDN. Scale, scalable media hosting for the Noster ecosystem by Stuart Bauman. Upload video and other large files up to 5 gigs each. Uh, simple flat rate pricing, buy storage with SATs. Fast, free, and unlimited data transfer. Uh, integrated NIP94 censorship resistance. Someone's indoctrinated here a little bit already. <laughs> Developer friendly API. This uh, sounds wild. Have you guys this tried? This one is fantastic. I, yeah, this looks yeah, really good. It's great. I, it's it's one of the few things that I have, have bookmarked, uh, and I've been using it as just to to distribute uh, videos and stuff like that. Because I used to upload like demo videos to YouTube because they were over like twenty megabytes, and Nostr the Bill wasn't handling them well, uh, so I had to default to using YouTube. But I've been using Satellite CDN. It's really, really, I'm really happy. It's incredibly cheap. It's like, I, I can't remember, but it was like five cents per gigabyte or something like that per month or something like that. It's very, very cheap. And it's like pay as you go as well. Like pretty much like top up for more gigabytes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. I, when I paid, I think I paid like a thousand sats or something. It's, it's so small. I can't Wow. Remember. One gigabyte is... 171 sats. That's insane. 
Yeah, it is. And they only charge for storage and no uh, throughput? Yep. Yeah. I mean, wow. clearly this is the, the, the NSA is behind this. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, what yeah, I was going to ask, what's the catch? <laughs> I think they're, they're probably using Cloudflare or two because they have like free yeah. egress. Awesome. Great to see professional CDNs enter the picture. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, Noster Mesh, self healing ESP32. Noster Arduino based mesh network. Wow, that's cool. Uh, while utilizing Wi Fi for node connections imposes a range limitation of less than 200 meters, it significant boosts bandwidth, thereby enabling the sharing of internet access across the mesh network. And uh, ESP32 microcontrollers are both highly affordable and widely accessible, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is great. This looks really cool. Nice. Um, I can do this Apple Pay one. We got our very own mutiny dude, Ben Carmen. Him and Paul Miller built this as a way to zap from any Nostra client. You just react to a note or, uh, or unlockable digital content, as Apple <laughs> would put it. <laughs> uh, with a uh, with any emoji, and Apple Pay will notify your Lightning Wallet over Nostra Wallet Connect to pay the Zap. So it's just like you know you can't you can't really stop an open protocol, and you know you can always leave the Domus app and go somewhere else to set up your Zaps, and then go back to the Domus app, and boom, you got Zap. So it's like, yeah. Hey, Emilian, do you want to talk a little bit about your Primo sort of plan, or at least if it's public in regards to Zaps and the Apple Store? Well, we're gonna try and uh, uh, put uh, you know Zaps back into the Apple Store somehow. We st we don't have a, a way that we know for sure will work. So currently, uh, Primal is, uh, iOS is in test flight, and uh, Zaps work because in test flight they let you do whatever you want. So probably we'll stay in test flight for the next uh, let's say month or so um, before we attempt to go uh, to uh, to the live store. Probably we're looking at September. And then we'll just try a bunch of different things uh, to, until we, like, if, if there is a way to put Zaps back into uh, onto iOS, legitimately, we'll find it. <laughs> we'll keep trying different things until we get there. Until then, uh, I, I think this is a really uh, uh, clever solution. And uh, like I said, Tony, it just demonstrates that you can't lock these types of things down. Uh, you can inconvenience a bunch of people, which is what they're doing, and piss off a bunch of developers, which is what they're also doing. But um, we're going to keep zapping <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> so I, I, I don't have anything more specific than that to say at this time. But uh, I think we as a community, quote unquote, like within Noster, we have to find a way to get Zaps back into the legit app store somehow. So that's it. Just get Apple to uh, to set up a Lightning node and you can do prisms that just 30% go to Apple. Like that, that yes. I mean, that would comply with it. Like they just need to accept Lightning. Straight to Tim Cook's self custodial law. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go to a wall, Satoshi. You know? <laughs> Either that or just acquire Apple. You know, we can just always acquire Yes, them. yes. I mean, it is quite absurd when you think about it. Like, you know, I get that they're trying to milk the app store, you know, by the, with the, the app 30% and stuff, but the content payment is just absolute nuts. You know, if you're a bigger player, they go around you by selling the content on the web and like Apple is not going to block Microsoft, right? They only block the little guys. Well, actually what I think is might be going on here, I'm not sure, but that's the kind of the hunch I'm having is this is really about Twitter. And I think Twitter wanted to launch a tipping feature uh, uh, or launched at some point, but like there was like a fight uh, around the 30%. Apple's tax. Um, and it's kind of telling that Elon was one of the first people to reply to Damos being kind of taken down or, or being threatened to be taken down. Um, he kind of said, I don't know if you guys remember, he said, hey, Apple, if you pick a fight with everyone, you're going to end up the, fighting the whole world. That's not a winning strategy. Like, interesting that Elon would reply to like uh, a down was uh, but, you know but but here's the thing guys like like apple can't for example block twitter 
right? If they block Twitter and Twitter says tomorrow that they're going to be out of the App Store, that would hurt Apple tremendously, right? It's a problem for Apple, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, Apple doesn't do that. When you look at how, for example, you know, Elon went around and said, hey, if you buy your uh, your your Twitter Blue subscription on the website instead of Apple, it was going to be cheaper. You know, Apple just, you know, they, they let go when it's a big player. Like Microsoft has a bunch of services and products that go around the App Store uh, uh, that way. And then they end up just matching inside the App Store eventually, right? So Noster just needs to grow enough and then Apple can't fucking say shit. 100%. I mean, it's it's going to be... We'll get to a point that's uh, sometime maybe within the next couple of years where iOS is just not fun, as as fun as other platforms because it doesn't have zaps, for example. Like, uh, but we're not there yet, and in the meantime, they have they can do whatever they want. I think we can crack this, like collectively. Uh, we have to keep trying. Well, I mean, they blocked Bitcoin wallets back in the day, you know, 2014. Uh, and all it took was a bunch of people shooting their phones on <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> all right, guys, you guys continue reading. It's hard for me to read and participate. I'll just, from time to time, come in and have like... No, it isn't. You just want us to do the work. Okay, fine. Kieran, you go. Okay. Oh, right, yeah, um... Zap stream. Oh yes. This is what I've been doing pretty much for the past like month, I guess. It's only been a month since I started the project, so um I don't know what you covered last week, but we have a, a hosted option now, like a hosted stream. So it's like um a streaming backend that you can pay in sats. Um and we do all the like delivery and the transcoding of the video. And I'm hosting that and it's like ten sats per minute. You get billed every like five seconds. There's like a debit on your account. What else do we do? We have um, emoji packs. I don't know if we mentioned that. The, you know, the emoji packs, they're like, um, like a Noster. It's one of the nips. I can't remember which one, but you can basically upload your own emoji packs and like add them to your channel. Um, and you can react with them and you can type them in the chat. Uh, we also added zap goals. Um, zap goals are like donation goals. And um, whenever you reach the zap goal, there's like a little animation and stuff. So you can add like a goal for, I don't know, burger or whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to raise zaps for. And what else? Today I deployed a bunch of stuff for Zapstream. There was a new backend which lets you, well, it's kind of a lot of groundwork for supporting a bunch more features in, in the future, um, like VODs and like metrics. So I want to build something that will kind of DM you your stream summary, I guess, if you're using the hosted option. But aside from that, we also added um, an LN URL address. So anyone that signs up on Zapstream, um, we're going to set the lightning address on their new profile to be their, their Zapstream balance. So they can basically start streaming and start receiving zaps like immediately, pretty much. And then there'll be like an option to withdraw funds from their account as well. Yeah, we added like, we're adding tons of stuff every day. So check out Zapstream. You get a thousand sats when you join up. So that's like two hours of free streaming. And yeah, that's it. I think you're really onto something with Zapstream. Um, yep. when, I, when I was on Citadel Dispatch last week with Matt O'Dell, he, um, I think he tried it for the first time with, within a show. And he was shocked by how active it was and how many sats he got for the show. Yeah, I watched that the playback of that because I was I wasn't online at the time. And yeah, he was like getting like a million sats zapped or something. It was like a lot. Don't open Zap Stream right now. <laughs> Don't open oh, Zap really? Stream. Yes. <laughs> Look at the top. <laughs> <laughs> well that's you know <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so people know there is a the there is live bondage right now happening on the. On <laughs> I just think that's like a random picture, you know. I think they're actually streaming like some game. 
<laughs> or something. It's just like a yeah, it's just like a random picture, I think. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> but yeah, there has been like um, people streaming like porn, pretty much. Um, wow, on the homepage, already. so damn. It's a little uh, take long. <laughs> a little risque if you're in an NSFW. Open protocol. If you're not in a safe place. <laughs> hey, uh, can, uh, Johnny, like... can we add our streaming uh, URL and key onto this thing from Riverside? So we do the next show live? Yeah, there is, there's ways to stream it. I just don't know if you... Yeah, I don't know how that will work over in Oster, but maybe. Okay. Uh, you just need a HLS link, like a HLS playlist. Okay, yeah, I think that Riverside does have that, yeah. And it would just make it like a thousand sets a second so that nobody listens to it. And, and then we, <laughs> we don't have to worry about the unedited content being different than the edited content. Yep. If we didn't have enough technical problems already, then we can definitely look into this one too. <laughs> back, back to back to what you were saying, Emilian, about the uh, the activity and Odell being shocked. Uh, I think that's the the basic thesis that we've been playing, right? That that the network effect start compounding throughout the different use cases because YouTube, like the chat in YouTube, is the network effects exclusively of YouTube, which are obviously huge, and we still need YouTube for distribution. But the network effects of, of SAP the stream, <laughs> like Kieran just said that he started working on, on SAP the stream less than a month ago, and it's already way more active, at, at least on a, on, a, on a Bitcoin show, it's way more active on, on SAP the stream than, than on YouTube, because nobody have to register exclusively for for Sapdot stream. We all already had our end paths and we just went there. And it's like all these use cases, they start flowing from one to, to another. And that's what beautiful about what we're building here. But it's not it's not just the end pubs, right? I mean, the content itself too, right? Because some of the content bleeds over to the other one. Some of the content, see, some microblogging comments get displayed under long form, and then the feed, you know, things start to sort of like get all intertwined, and and you get this crazy compound. Yeah, that's that's why I was so interested on on, on NIP eighty nine and NIP thirty one. Uh, NIP thirty one gives you like an alt tag, so whenever you are say on on Snort or Coracle or any of these social clients, and they see uh, an event that they don't know how to handle, they have this alt tag that will display a human friendly format of the of the asset in text, which tells you what the hell it is that you're looking at. So if someone replies, say for example, to a highlight and they don't know the, the client doesn't know how to handle a highlight, they can see, okay, I'm replying to a highlight, the content of the highlight is whatever. And with NIP89, we, uh, the client doesn't know how to handle this highlight or this song or this stream or whatever it might be. But with NIP89, they can tap on the on the on the event that they don't know how to handle, and it asks the the people that you, the user, are f is, is following, to get a handler. Oh, you want your this is a stream event. You can go to sub that stream, and it will send you to sub that stream with the right URL to use sub that stream. And that's why I think uh, discovery on Noster is so mind blowing. And people are are still think that discovery in Noster is bad, but the fact that content and use cases leak from one to another makes discovery absolutely incredible because you might find that you're following someone that is using Nostra in a way that you didn't know existed and you see that person using Nostra in that way right in your feed and you find, discover a new use of Nostra right from your demos, from your coracle, from your client. So what you're saying is that you're bullshit. That is exactly what I'm saying. It's just, that's the TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, on, on Snort, we just show like the JSON dump. So <laughs> I don't know. Yep. You've been asking me for a while to like implement the, I guess it's highlights. Most people are using highlights, but yeah. NIP89, you just need people to implement it. But, but it's also anything else, right? Because if you reply to, so for example, community. So right now, Snort also shows you the JSON that you're replying to a community, which is like, I have no idea what that even means. Um, but you could also show with with this NIP thirty one. You could also just show this is a community title, whatever, right? Yeah, we we should totally support it. I agree. Two weeks, 
Same here. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. TM. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read this Noster Sites. I'm going to try. Noster Sites, convert your Noster node into a personal web page. Use your favorite client to post some HTML, a node, relay must be connected. Copy node ID, uh, you redirect it to your new page that share with your friends. I can't remember if this was the project, but there was another one that got a bounty from me for something like this. I wanted to make it you know, very similar to like personal blog so that instead of servers to, you just need a client that you know reads the notes from the relays. And then you have yourself like instant uh, web presence. Uh, it's going to be great for uh, companies and, you know, people making meme websites like I do. And, uh, you know, only fan girls who need the link tree. I think you might re be referring to uh, NBlog, which is the one that I know that was doing. That's that. right. That's right. Guys, we're approaching almost two hours now. So uh, is there any projects here that we must have uh, that we maybe didn't mention just so we get it in uh, and, then, uh, and then we start sort of wrapping up? I think maybe we should uh, mention Reliable, <laughs> mainly because I have mixed feelings. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, uh, Reliable.org, a nonprofit operating and managing a network of Nostra Relays founded to bring a high level of availability and redundancy to Nostra Relays. Goal is to help grow Nostra protocol and usage by providing a high level of service to users without need for forcing people into a pay to relay approach. Uh, see geographically distributed relays that use latency-based DNS routing to send users to the closest relay with the least latency. Relay locations are uh, st states, Brazil, Singapore, Australia, and Sweden, and coming soon, South Africa, Japan, and California. So yeah, mainly I I, <laughs> I kind of like and dislike this uh, this project. I like the people behind it, uh, and I think they are good actors, uh, but this feels centralizing if the uh, the aim is to have these professionally run relays that require uh, sysops and require like all these fancy things they are way out of reach from just regular users uh, I'm not not that I'm saying that regular users are going to run relays because this is not uh, peer to peer but um, but I think this is way too much on the on the professional side of, of running relays and it's could be extremely centralizing. I mean, if something like Reliable.org had launched one year ago, I'm pretty sure that we would have an even worse problem than we have with the Deimos and, and Snort Relay being so so central to, to Noster. I don't think this is the way that Noster needs to um, ca needs to scale because I, I don't think this way scales, basically. I, I, I think it's You know, a, this is an anti-pattern. It's a, it's a row... Yes, that's that's exactly what I think. But I think the issue is that we don't have goss the gossip protocol and more than the gossip because I don't think gossip is enough. But I, the, th the problem is that we don't have enough clients supporting gossip. So we end up with things like Bluster and we end up with things like Reliable. On the other side, I also want to say it is that I, I like that someone is experimenting with relays because until now we've been using uh, relays as a server and not doing anything special with them. I don't think this is enough experimentation and I don't think it's the right direction, but I'm glad that someone is doing something with relays. But, you know, like we should assume, right, that anything that is possible will be done, right? If we like it or yes. don't like it. So it's kind of good that happens and we can sort of like govern ourselves accordingly, I guess. Like it's a good way of looking at this kind of stuff. Could, could you almost say that it's like not the thing that we need yet? Like it's not really proven to be solving the problems that we currently have. Like it, like, I mean, having something DNS based routable, like, you know, that's, that's a valid thing. It's just like not really necessary yet. And we can solve other problems on the decentralization layer first, if, if that's like summarizing. I, I think it's a I think it's a hard proposition to say that like you know it's like who who are we to sort of like decide that you know it's not ready yet or whatever right I mean like I have a shit connection right now and my like using trying to use any of the clients right now on this connection sucks 
right? And so, so like I don't know, maybe maybe somebody out there thinks that like this this trade off is okay, right? Even though it's not great in an anti pattern. Like, is the concern that it would, the, these guys would be too successful? Like, because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, like, great, more relays. You know, they're <laughs> yes. not stopping any other relays from. Um, well, I mean, I mean, the the concern is that if they become, I mean, it's just it's just a centralizing force, basically. It's, that's the whole argument. Uh, if it becomes the relay that has the least latency and it has absolutely every node because it's pulling everything you want. I mean, you have the clear incentive to just connect to that thing, right? And I think Noster is still way, way too early in the uh, in the absolutely capturable state, uh, just like, say, Bitcoin 2011 or 2012, where it was it would have been very easy to attack the network and pretty much destroy it. I think Noster is still there. And I think something like Reliable is a step on in the road. So, so right now, until now, we've had Deimos, uh, and and snort as the main relays, and that would give you what ninety percent, ninety five, ninety eight percent of the notes that that you needed. I I think reliable is one step closer, one more step towards that direction. Even if I'm I'm not saying that the guys are bad actors, and I think that what they're doing is is interesting, um, but. But I think it's the the wrong the wrong direction. But just like I said before, the fact that reliable exists and the fact that Blaster exists is a symptom that we are not uh, addressing distribution of nodes. In in uh, again going back to 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 the fact that we don't have good gossip support. But again, I I, th- I just think it's a, it's an anti pattern and it's going in the wrong direction. Well, it's also growing pains, right? Like it's it's normal to have an an ideal tools on the beginning. I mean, you know, again, like if you go back to Bitcoin's beginnings, right? I mean, people were doing node discovery over IRC. You know, Joy Market still does. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's okay. I mean, you know, we will find ways because again, you know, we're not forced to use reliable unlike other closed protocols. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I agree with that. We need more relays with 500 errors is basically what you're saying, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> it is too good of a service. I need to start charging for it. You cornered the market, MVK. <laughs> BRB. Uh, I'm going to BRB on the pod too soon if it, the connection keeps on going like this. All right, Noster RSS. I'm gonna bring this up because uh, it's a very cool thing, you know. Essentially, bridging RSS to to Noster is it's like you know it just easily and permissionless onboards every RSS feed out there. So even if the content provider doesn't want their RSS feed on Noster, through this you just post the RSS feed and boom, they're on Noster. <laughs> I think the mere fact that you're publishing th- something through RSS means that you're okay with it being anywhere, right? Exactly. But it's kind of cool that it happens automatically. It is. All right. Ostrich work, ostrich.work is a Nostra Jobs board for people. Uh, it seems to uh, have uh, have some take. So uh, check it out. Uh, Monster, a Nostra bridge announced by Alex Gleason. It's a bridge that allows interaction between Fediverse, Fediverse and Noster. Uh, anyone has some comments on that one? Didn't he just get a, a grant to like kind of like step down from Fediverse stuff and focus more on bridges and his vision for how to incorporate the two? Yes. So the problem that I have is that I can never remember which grants are public or which ones we're still discussing. <laughs> so I often it's like the so you mutiny let one. Other people bring it up. Exactly. So I just <laughs> that's right. I'm just gonna stay quiet until somebody talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, so so the grant was was for for Muster, and he stepped down from Truth Social, from uh, the Trump uh, social network. Oh, well, Noster is the only Truth Social because the message, the notes are signed. So what he's saying is like Trump will follow him eventually, right? <laughs> Come and join Noster. <laughs> That's right. 
All right, so I'm skipping half of the news and noteworthy because we already talked about. Okay, several projects going f FOSS. Uh, Gitern and an, SS an SSH based multi tenant Git host has been fully open source. I don't think this is related to Noster, but great. Noster Net Nests is now fully open source. And uh, Primo also is now MIT. MIT is the only FOSS license that exists. Uh, GPL is not FOSS. That's not contentious. What, what about Apache 2? Apache is pretty much uh, uh, MIT. If I remember right, they just have some specific uh, uh, improvements over, uh, over patents. I can't remember now. Okay, so I guess uh, Geyser got some funding to to do more Noster stuff. And uh, Primo got a million bucks. Nice and round. So we did from 1031 and Hivemind. So again, wanted to thank our investors and uh, it really feels great to be with such mission aligned investors. So when we decided to um, open source the entire stack, like Backing up, our original plan was to open source the caching service uh, and the clients. But then uh, we decided maybe a month ago or so to just open source everything that we do, every part of the stack, so so people can stand up the entire kind of replica of the, uh, the primal service using the stuff that we open source. So when we ran this by 1031 and Hivemind, we got unanimous support immediately, right away. So that was that's nice. right. So now they can fund the competitor. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or anyone can fund the competitor. They, right. they don't need to do it. That's right. Let the thousand flowers bloom. That's a great thing, guys. That's right. No, it's like it's super early, right? In uh, in Noster, so yeah, it's a different uh, it's a different dynamic. All right, Truth Social head of engineering leaves. Check uh, okay, leaves to work. Yeah, we already talked about that. Musk explains why he's rebranding Twitter to X Twitter. Instagram launches thread. It's like happening. It's so interesting. And uh, people are loving threads. And uh, if you guys ever want to see some, uh, some of uh, Pablo's Instas, definitely download threads. <laughs> the Nostra Report now has a YouTube channel. That's great. Uh, RFK Jr. mentions one more thing to convince Bitcoiners to uh, vote for him. <laughs> Nostra documentary <laughs> released. Uh, that was pretty cool, Doc. And then reads, uh, Why Should I Care About Nostra by Bitcoin Barry? Uh, how to use Not the Comment by Sam Some Skies. Uh, all your advertising. Models are broken by Footsters. Footster. Zappo pay Zap even if they say it's forbidden by Tony, our Tony. No, not not me, Tony. A uh, different Tony. It was different Tony. All right. Uh, audience questions. How do vanity addresses like those generated with Nostrogen work? Mining. I don't know what Nostrogen is. Um, yeah, basically, it checks the values that you want to uh, you want to generate, and it just starts creating a bunch of private keys, uh, computes the public key, and sees if the public key matches um, the first part of the string that you want it. Oh, so this is just vanity ad, uh, vanity actual uh, uh, pub keys. Yeah, and buffs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So just uh, pub keys. I'm a Bitcoiner. Um, just, uh, you know, like uh, it's a credit card problem. Just go brute force it. Do we need fully air gap signing devices for Nostra keys? Uh, the answer is no, because if they're like fully <laughs> air gapped and cold, you cannot sign anything. And on Nostra, you have to sign everything. So uh, it's, it's, it reminds me a little bit of like lightning. Right, like it, the the pattern is different than cold storage. Right, the pattern is always on, so you just need to do a better job at securing that. And hopefully, with Frost, we can we can resolve the Noster key problem. 
But but imagine if if you like something that much that you go and get your keys to sign a reaction event. That, that's meaningful. That's like like a ten thousand sap. <laughs> <laughs> um all right folks uh thank you so much for participating coming commenting and uh carrying on the torch since my starlink got uh got uh, censored because of the nostra content we know uh elon is listening so guys uh any final thoughts kiran you know kiran no, no. No comments. All right. So, oh, there he is. <laughs> he Sorry, fell asleep. Uh, no, com <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got to uh, live up to your standard earlier. You know, no comment. I'm just here to laugh and, and listen. So my Starlink is acting up to uh, BRB. <laughs> 500 errors. You have to pay now. That's right. Oh. 402, baby. 402. 402. Pablo. Yeah, final comment. We are doing great. Uh, Nostra is winning, regardless of users. Don't focus on those stupid numbers. It's like a Bitcoin price. It's kind of irrelevant. We're building a bunch of really cool shit, and I could not be more bullshit. Nothing like Pablo being bullshit. Milian, any final thoughts? <laughs> well, just uh, echoing Pablo's uh, thoughts there. Uh, Primal, we, we love working on Nostra. We're re like, there's so much work to do, but we're loving every minute of it. And it's glorious to be uh, developing all of this with all of you guys out there in the open. We're each other's R&D department and what we're going to build together, I think just like projecting even a few months out, never, never mind a few years out, is going to be insane. So psyched to be a part of it. Cool. Thank you, Milian. Mr. Tony. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on. It's been great. I... Uh, you know, I think some of the coolest stuff from Nostra to come is like how applications can like take advantage of things and things like the, uh, sorry, Pablo, I forgot the name of the data machine data vending thing machine. And, and the API data vending machine. Yeah. Things like that. Um, the way applications can interact and talk to each other, how users can talk to each other. Like it's a social media, right? But like there's so many cool things that we can build with, with what Nostra has. So I'm excited to see what's to come. Yeah, guys, I think... I don't know. I'm super bullish. Sorry, super bullshit on things like uh, NIP89. I think the intertwine uh, and the facilitation of the intertwineness of the content that is different with different clients is something that is simply not possible in closed protocols and is not possible in the current field world. So, like, it's kind of how we win is doing the things that they can't do. So, you know, if we don't focus so much on just remaking what already exists and focus on making what's new, we don't have to fight inertia, right? And, uh, and, and it gets us much further ahead. It seems like there is a perfect storm brewing, right? And, uh, and all the things that you guys are working on and that, like, you know, this, this super incredibly rapid developing uh, uh, protocol uh, is doing is, uh, is getting us there. All right, folks, I am going to press the button here and stop recording and torturing ourselves with this delay. Thanks for listening. For more resources, check the show notes. We put a lot of effort into them. And remember, we don't have a crystal ball. So let us know about your project. Visit Bitcoin.review to find out how to get in touch. Mm -hmm.